Hello YouTube, this is Alexis, the Transgender Duelist, and today I'm going to be bringing you a Stygian deck profile. So for those of you who are not aware or simply have never heard of Stygian, it's a small series of fiend-type monsters used in the 5Ds anime by Officer Truge, and that's really all there is to it. Um, the series only really produces up three monsters, but those monsters are actually pretty good. Well, the main, do main deck monsters are. The Synchro is really just kind of there to keep with the theme. Uh, anyway, let's go ahead and get with the deck, but before I do, I just want to say this is going to be a little bit of a longer deck profile for two reasons. One, this is a very combo-heavy deck, so I want to make sure you're aware of some of the combos that you are able to do with this deck. And two, because a lot of these choices are personalized and can be swapped out for things in the side deck or, th or other fiend monsters or even other spell cards, depending on what you want to do. So without further ado, let's go ahead and get straight to the deck profile. So first off, actually, I'm going to start with Sangin first. So the reason why we're running triple Sangin instead of only like one or two of it is because, one, we want to see this thing really quickly so that we can get it destroyed and start getting out our monsters continuously. And whenever we use it for a Synchro Summon or a Link Summon, we also get another search, which allows us to continuously recur advantage and is also the main reason for a lot of the choices that we select in our deck. Like, I think in the entire deck, the only mo there's only one monster that isn't searchable by Sangin, and that is simply because continuously getting advantages off of Sangin is just so good. So I just wanted to get that out of the way. The reason why Sangin is at three is because we want to see it, we want to continuously abuse it, and we want to make sure that we continuously get its effects off to get our searches and continuously get our combos going. Because this is a very combo-heavy deck. You have to get your your pieces continuously in order to make your plays happen. So we're running triple Battle Fader, and Battle Fader is here for three reasons. One, it is searchable off of Sangin, and while it is searchable off of Sangin, you can't actually use it in your hand to turn your searches, so do keep that in mind. So if you do decide to search it out and then try to Battle Fader your opponents to prevent yourself from losing, sadly that is not a option, so Please do keep that in mind, as sadly that is a restriction that you're going to have to endure. Second, it is a level 1 monster you can special summon, which is pretty nice for two reasons. One, I am running a formula Synchron, so that we can go into that if we want to. And secondly, it allows us to go into level 6 Synchros if we really want to. I'm only running one level 1 Synchro, which is Stardust Charge Warrior, but the point of the matter is that we can go into it because of this. And then third is just to have a defensive card, because this is a very combo-heavy deck, so we do need to uh, defend ourselves sometimes. Running one max C, this is just here to be a hand trap that lets us slow down our opponent or get some more combo pieces into our hand. Not really a lot to say there. So, triple Phantom Sky Blaster. So this is actually a really good card in this deck for two reasons. One, because of the way the deck is designed, you can usually get out a monster or two before summoning this thing. And if you summon this thing out with, say, myself and one other monster, you'll get two tokens. If you summon this thing out while you have a link monster and one monster, you'll get three tokens, which allows you to have an entire field. And even though I didn't build it to do it, if you really wanted to, there is technically a way that you could turn this into uh, an extra link deck. You'd have to you know, make it really, really specific, but you could do it just because Phantom Sky Blaster has such interesting utility. So whenever it's normal summon, you get a bunch of tokens, and it also allows you to go ahead and make your shoe up if you go ahead and have Stygian Street Patrol special summon out your uh, Stygian Security, your Sinister Spy Rocket, or your Tuning Gum, which allows you to go ahead and make it your shoe up by just simply... Uh, with just a simple two-card combo, which is a pretty nice thing, it allows you to go plus one. And if you have more monsters, you get another, you get an extra token, which can be pretty nice. You can make like a Link Spider first, and then summon the Tashula into your main monster zone. So nice little utility you have there. It's also got 1,100 attack points, and it can burn your opponent, but you're never really going to get the burn off in this deck since you're not really designed to ever keep the tokens or the Sky Blaster on the field. So we're running one Sinister Spy Rocket. This is in here just simply to be another tuner that we can summon off of 
Sergeant Security over here. You can assist special summons any level one fiend type monster from your deck, which this monster is. Its effect to blow up a face up spell or trap is it's nice, but it's not really the best. But it's one of the more useful utility level one fiend type tuners there are. So I decided to run it as a one of, and it does definitely help out. I actually, won a game against uh, what was I against? But yeah, against uh, Trick Stars because I blew up their field spell. And they weren't able to actually gain me, which left me on, I think, like 600 life points. And I was able to actually attack over them for game. So that was pretty nice, especially since they resolved, like, I think it was like double or triple of the reincarnation dance. Uh, yeah, anyway. So we're running triple stage and security. So stage and security is really, really good because if it gets destroyed, you get to go ahead and special summon out another tuner, basically. And we're only running out three tuners in this deck. We're running triple of it. One Spy Rocket, and then one Tuning Gum. And this allows us to special summon all of them. I'm also running a Jar of Avarice, as you'll see in a little bit. We'll get to that shortly. But basically, it's just here to be a level 1 tuner that you can just go ahead and easily get to the uh, easily cycle into other ones. So if you don't have Sang in, turn 1, set it. Uh, ideally, have a Supply Squad. And your opponent will ram into it. You'll get another tuner, and you'll get to draw one card. Not ideal, but it's this is a very combo deck, so I based it around that that little concept. Now for Star History Patrol. So this thing has two effects, and it's the main reason why this deck was created. One, if it destroys a monster by battle, you get to inflict damage equal to its level times 100. Not really relevant. I don't think I've ever actually attacked over anything in this deck in any of my test games, so... Yeah, I don't think it's ever re relevant, but it is something that you can keep in mind. And then secondly, if it's in the graveyard, you get to banish it from the graveyard. The special summon out one uh, fiend-type monster with 2,000 or less attack points, which is why everything in this deck is under 2,000, and almost everything is searchable by uh, Sangin, uh, except for Starting Street Patrol. I actually forgot that this thing was uh, 1,600. But uh, regardless, this thing is... Which is really really good and it is the main reason why this deck exists because it will special summon anything in this deck which allows you to do some pretty nice little shenanigans as you can go ahead and special summon out start uh, security from your hand normal summon out phantom sky blaster you get its effect you get two tokens sink into a link spider sink into trish banish off three other cards and attack them for 3700 so it's got a nice little utility there so it also combos really well with another card that's going to be coming up right after the tuner, so keep that in mind. So we're running one Tuning Gum. This is actually a card that I added in last minute, just because it's uh, got a nice little bit of utility. So first off, it can target a face-up monster on the field and turn it into a tuner, which can be, can be pretty nice. Like, you can use it on a Phantom Sky Blaster token to go ahead and get a level 4 tuner, which you can use to go into a level 8 synchro, like say Scar Red Dragon Archfiend, or start a Spark Dragon, or whatever you want. Like, I haven't done that yet, but it is something you can definitely do. Additionally, you can go ahead and add in a level 7 synchro. I actually want to add in a clear wing, but I'm not really sure what to drop yet, so yeah. And additionally, <clears throat> sorry about that. Uh, when it's in the graveyard, you can go ahead and banish it, and target a monster on the field and turn it into a tuner, I believe. Let me look. Oh, yeah, never mind. It just lets me uh, it lets me protect my synchros from targeting effects. Yeah, the wrong I had the wrong monster, but still pretty nice little utility to go ahead and stop like a stealth from spinning back your uh, your crystal wing, your Trish, your uh, whatever monster you might have. This can prevent it from being shuffled back into the deck. Uh, so a nice little bit of utility there. Now we're running one Vice Berserker, and this card is really only good because Stige History Patrol allows us to go ahead and special summon it from our hand while also having out a tuner. So it's that's why it's only a one of. Originally it was a two of, but I found that I was losing a lot of games or it's very least struggling just because I had two of it in my hand where I would draw into one when it could have been something better. So basically the idea of the deck is, uh, this, the idea of this card is that you can go ahead and sync it into like a Stige Insurgents over here, which allows you to go ahead and just attack your opponent with a 4200 feet stick, 
that will become 5,000 on the second attack and can OTK your opponent really easily if they have two monsters. And even though they only have one monster, this thing can attack directly on his second attack, unlike a lot of other monsters. So yeah, nice little bit of, of synergy there. It's a Fiend-type monster, searchable by Sangin. It's beautiful. Now secondly, we're running Double Wandering King Wildwind. So I'm sure a lot of people have seen this card and haven't really found a good way to use it. Well, I found a pretty nice way to use it in this deck. So first off, this thing is a level 4 non-tuner that can special summon itself. Which means that if we have a tuner monster, which all of them are level 1, we can special summon this thing from our hand to go for a level 5 synchro, which is pretty good. And while we only have 3 level 5 synchros, it has never come up where I have a dead one of this in my hand. And on top of that, it also has an effect from the grave where I can banish it to add a uh, theme-type tuner from our deck to our hand that has under 1500, which all of our tuners do. Now, you could run other tuners if you want to. This is just my take on the deck. So, it's got a nice little bit of energy there. It's also a dark monster. Everything in this deck is a dark except for the Max C, actually. You can use it for a Lord of Darkness if you don't really need it or want it in your hand. So, yeah. Uh, next, we're running Triple Allure of Darkness, just for just for consistency. Double Dark Hole in a Regeki to field Nuke our opponent. Foolish Burial to get Stygian Street Patrol or any other monster that we may need into the graveyard. One for one to get out our Tuner Monsters onto the field. Now we're running Double Shuffle Reborn because this allows us to extend our combos. Or if we don't have a Stygian Street Patrol and something worthwhile in our hand, we can go ahead... Special summon out whatever we need, like say we need a tuner, we special summon out the tuner, say we want to summon out Sangin, so that we can get it into the graveyard for a link or a synchro summon, we can do that. Just a lot of nice little bits of synergy we have there. To be honest, I probably should be running a level four uh, a level a level four synchro to be honest, but I mean I just usually use this thing for a link summon, so I don't really care. Although I would recommend that if you can find room to add in a level four synchro. Next, we're running one Soul Charge, and Soul Charge allows us to just do stupid things. Running one, uh, running Triple Supply Squad because we need to keep hand advantage and we need to get our combo pieces consistently. And Supply Squad allows us to very easily get our combo pieces into our hand, use Titan Street Patrol, and just overall keep our deck up and running. Because this deck, unlike a lot of combo decks, it uses our hand more than it does anything else. So... We definitely need something like this to make everything work out. Running triple back to the front to get our to get monsters back to the field. I like using it on Sangin because it lets us get a search. You can also use it just to summon out an extra monster that you need for a combo or just for defense. Or heck, maybe you just need to, to uh, so the Firewall Dragon can get another Link monster and just bounce your opponent's field back to the hand. A lot of nice little things you can do there. Next, we're running Double Jar of Avarice because of the fact that Stygian Security is a floater, so we want to get it back into our deck so we can survive OTKs. And additionally, we can also use it to just put back cards and get another card if we really need to. It can also be useful for just getting Dark Hole and Regeki back into your deck so that you can try to draw them to out your opponent's unbreakable field. So that's all for the main deck. It's, it's very tight, but you can definitely switch some things around, like maybe drop Tuning Gum for, I don't know, like say... Creation Resonator or Flare Resonator or maybe you just want to get another tuner. I don't know. Whatever you want to do. It's a very customizable deck. The next we're running Double Deco Talker. Uh, not double. We're running one Deco Talker. Easiest monster to link summon and just open up extra monster zone slots. I'm not really going to go into it. It's pretty easy to summon out. And if you use Sangin, you get a search. One Firewall Dragon. Haven't ever actually summoned it, but it's pretty nice, so I just keep it in there. You could easily drop it. It's not really necessary. One IB to World Chalice Priestess. This is just in here because sometimes I want to get my monsters out of the extra monster zone, and I could run double Proxy Dragon, but I want it to be spicy and run one of her and one Proxy Dragon. It hasn't come back to bite me yet, just because a lot of the synchros in my extra deck are not dark monsters. One Link Spider for the combo I mentioned with Trishula. Uh, one World Chalice Warrior, it's very easy to make. You just use a Link Spider and a Link 2, pretty easy to go into. 
It could be a little tricky at times, but I've never had an issue where I, where I actually needed it and couldn't go into it. Next, we're running one Proxy Dragon, just to get our monsters out of the extra monster zone. Running one Armades keep Keeper of the Boundaries, just because it lets us attack without fear of Mirror Forces. One Crystal Wing, because it's pretty reasonable to be able to summon this thing. One Formula to get extra draws and make use of Battle Fader. One high speed Roy Sharabara, just because this thing is better than the Stygian security synchro. But I decided to run two of it just because there's no real difference in this deck. And being able to attack with a 3000 beach stick as opposed to a 2400 one is just a lot more useful, in my opinion. But that doesn't necessarily mean that it's better, it's just more useful. Keep in mind that this thing actually keeps the attack points, whereas the Stygian security does not. One Scar Red Dragon Archfiend because it is not terribly difficult to make this thing if necessary. One Stardust Charge Warrior so that we can get extra draws and attack over our opponent's entire field of uh, Pesci Yang Zings if the, if the uh, need ever comes up. Double Stygian Surrogates over here. This thing is basically the uh, OG Speed Void, uh, whatever this thing's name is. Chabara? Yeah, Chabara. It just gets to attack a second time against 800 attacks. So basically you attack with a 2200 body and then a 3000 body. So it's got a pretty pretty high damage output. The only problem is that it doesn't do anything else and it loses the attack points at the end of the battle phase. But still, pretty nice little thing you can do there. And lastly, we're running one Trishula because it's very easy to summon with the Phantom Sky Blaster. So let me know what you guys think in the comment section below. I'm open to suggestions. This is a deck that I've been working on for, I want to say, about a month now. It could have been a little bit longer. It could have been a little bit less. The deck is a lot of fun. It does have a little bit of an issue where it needs to get its combo pieces going or you don't really have a deck. But other than that, it's a pretty fun little deck. I've made a lot of cool combos. Like I was able to, I was playing against Mega Yumi and I was able to actually resolve the uh, Vice Berserker combo and Trishula him twice in the same game. Like it was absolutely hilarious. He he was raging on me. I hope that he uploads that to his channel though because it was it was absolutely funny. Also Mega Yumi, if you uh, if you're seeing this, uh, go ahead and type in the comment section hashtag um hashtag Vice Berserker. Uh, anyway, uh, I'm going to be signing out. Leave your thoughts and comments in the comment section. And this is Alexis, and I'll see you all later.